National security, one of the biggest topics of the evening, of course, with the candidates all trying to show that they know how to keep the country safe in the wake of the terror attacks in Paris and then in San Bernardino, California. So Carly Fiorina, a former technology CEO, says the Obama administration must start asking private companies to let down the cyber walls and the encryption that prevent us from seeing what some of these people are doing to help in this fight. Here she is. Why did we miss the Sarnayev brothers? Why did we miss the San Bernardino couple? It wasn't because we had stopped collecting metadata. It was because, I think, as someone who comes from the technology world, we were using the wrong algorithms. This is a place where the private sector could be helpful because the government is woefully behind the technology curve. And then we now learn that DHS says, no, we can't check their social media. For heaven's sakes, every parent in America is checking social media, and every employer is as well, but our government can't do it. The bureaucratic procedures are so far behind, our government has become incompetent. Guy Benson is the political editor of townhall.com and a Fox News contributor. Brad Blakeman served as deputy assistant to President George W. Bush, um, and they're both here to assess how these candidates did last night when it came to Homeland Security. Um, Guy, I, I think, you know, Carly made a very good point there. She did. She spoke to a concern that a lot of Americans have. She spoke to that DHS policy that came to light this week that is totally ludicrous and indefensible. And I think overall, here in Vegas last night, this was a substantive debate. I agree with what Howie Kurt said just a few minutes ago. The candidates rose to the moment, and I think they performed relatively and objectively quite well. Let's take a look at one more soundbite here. Actually, we've got a couple because there's some very good back and forth on this, and then we'll get Brad's thoughts. Let's hear uh, from Ted Cruz now on this issue of political correctness and watching what people are doing online. The Zarnayev brothers, the elder brother made a public call to jihad and the Obama administration didn't target it. Nadal Hassan communicated with Anwar al-Awlaki, a known radical cleric, asked about waging jihad against his fellow soldiers. The problem is, because of political correctness, the Obama administration, like a lot of folks here, want to search everyone's cell phones and emails and not focus on the bad guys, and political correctness is killing people. Thank you. I mean, it's hard to think, Brad, of a more important debate and discussion to have about how to keep this country safe. What did you think last night? What I thought, there was a stark difference, night and day, between what needs to be done and what is being done. Uh, the differences between what Obama's administration believes is important, like looking at social media to determine whether somebody is is safe to come into this country, whether we're using all the tools in the toolbox, as Carly said, in partnering with private corporations to get information that's not offensive at all or restricted, but is out in the public domain in order to make sure that we're connecting the dots that need to be connected. Look, you can't get information unless you have the information and disseminate the information. And the information that we we're requesting, again, is in the public domain. And yeah. what do you think companies are doing with that mega data? Don't you think they're using it for their own benefit? Why shouldn't government do it for ours to keep us safe? Yeah, I, I mean, they both pointed out very clearly the specific cases, Nadal Hassan, the Zarnayev brothers, and now San Bernardino, where these people are slipping away. And why are they slipping away? Because they're able to get into fairly easy things. They're communicating on PlayStations, uh, and they're able to communicate in encrypted ways that, that were not just simply good enough to handle in the government right now. And I think it has a lot of people very upset. Now, here's Donald Trump's take on this, and then we'll get Guy's thoughts. You could close it. What I like even better than that is getting our smartest and getting our best to infiltrate their internet so that we know exactly where they're going, exactly where they're going to be. I like that better. But we have to. Who would be? I just can't imagine somebody booing. These are people that want to kill us, folks. And you're you're objecting to us infiltrating their conversations. I don't think so. I don't think so. Mm. So, Guy, that's the privacy issue. Um, that's what got the people booing in the back. The minute you say, you know, that you want to basically watch some of what's happening online, um, the, the privacy folks get very up in arms about it. And yet, as I like to point out, uh, the San Bernardino killers and the Zarnayevs and Hassan, they had plenty of privacy. They communicated all the time online, and nobody knew what they were doing. Yeah. Yeah, if we're not watching what jihadists are doing online, especially jihadists abroad, that's 
total political malpractice, not political malpractice, it's national security malpractice. So I didn't quite understand that booing. I think it may have been residual from a previous part of the answer that, that we didn't play there, where Trump was talking about shutting down parts of the Internet in a very nonspecific way, and it was an answer, that part of the answer was sort of incomprehensible to me. I'm not exactly sure what he was getting at. So I think when you hear when you hear his head, I think what he was getting at was, you know, going behind the encryption walls and being able to deal with shutting that part of it down so that they can't communicate that way. Um, but we got to leave it right there. Guys, thank you very much. We got a lot in. Brad and Guy, always thank good you. to see you both.